very good evening to everyone welcome to global online and here we are with our nta ugc net preparation for paper one that is 2022 batch yes bishwajit very good evening i hope everything is clearly audible and visible so we are with our unit that is information and communication technology this is the lecture six all the lecture links are provided in the description box you can check them very well with the name of the topics as well as with the name of the the links for the lecture and uh, today we are going to see some uh, detailed description about memory uh, computer memory and types uh, that is com computer memory types and we are going to talk about certain digital initiatives which we have started yesterday onwards apart from this you know that uh, every day we are live at uh, 9 p.m. Monday to Saturday we are live. Monday to Wednesday we have regular lectures. Then with Thursday we have lectures for the subscribers specially. Friday and Saturday we go with MCQs. Now these MCQs are basically for uh, the topic which we are doing right now. I mean to say if you are doing uh, ITC. So it will be based on what? It will be based on ITC. Now let's quickly understand how our batches run. So we have UGC net nta net batches for paper one now these batches are in the form of 100 plus live lectures video lectures notes in the form of pdf we have previous year question papers also for practice so this previous year question papers will give you a well hand in practice of a lot of things mock test will be taken but the mock test will be taken after the completion of the uh, particular i mean to say after the completion of the entire unit we will start with mcqs which will again give you a very good practice in the form of uh, marathons also. Uh, you have a contact detail. So in case if you are having any doubt or any concern, you can please get in touch with the given uh, contact numbers. Now, apart from that, we have our global online app. Now this app we have updated so you can see the logo properly. You can go to the Google store. You can get the app also very well. Now, please remember that when we talk about uh, I mean to say when you go for app, this is how I have just shown you the uh, screen just to make you sure that you know very well. Now this is the play store. Now why I am telling more about store because if you remember I have been telling that whatever we do on daily basis. Now like for example today I am taking you know the questions on uh, memory. So if you go on the app and if you check you will be having certain questions but on app where exactly to go you can go on the store and once you are on the store. Uh, Shreya C, I am showing you, you can see, once you click on the store, you will get this type of page, that is ICT. Now today is ICT 6th test, today's test is 6th. So you will get this test, once you click open over here, you are allowed to attempt it, okay. So just keep in mind, it will help you today in case if you can try it well today and uh, this test on store you have to go and after clicking on the store this is where I have shown you the store is after clicking on the store it will go to I ITC and it will you have to go to ITC 6 so this is a free test which you can take okay Arabic literature very uh, warm welcome to our channel yes PDF uh, see if you want PDF that is a form of notes so you have to join our whatsapp gra uh, groups that is the only place where we circulate our notes with respect to the uh, topics which we teach I mean to say after the completion of the topic is it fine I hope your doubts are cleared now any doubts you can just put me uh, put in the chat box so that I can take well in advance before we start the class now today uh, yes we know uh, as we all know we are talking talking about ICT uh, topic we have a total questions of this unit is 5 total marks allotted to the question are 10 if you see slowly gradually we have completed all the topics ITC and governance I'll be taking tomorrow now in today's class as I said I'll be completing uh, memory and certain topics on digital initiative uh, tomorrow's class no I have some small small topics some terms which are left which I'll be completing tomorrow just ensure that you know you are attending the class so that at least before MCQ you are well in prepared few topics there are there but they are coming with the MCQ so that time also we will discuss them in detail fine so let's uh, go ahead with the today's session now as we know at the start of the session we start some uh, 
some of the current affairs with respect to ICT. Now, this was the slide yesterday which I was not getting. So, let's understand. Now, see, this particular uh, topics which I am going to discuss state-wise. Now, these are the initiatives which are taken by the government. So, that, you know, uh, these particular uh, things were actually uh, done in the form of ICT as a di digital initiative for learning. So, what are they as per the states? We will see them. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Tamina, where were you yesterday? I was asking you, your topic of booting was left. I have brought it today. So, I thought maybe you left the class yesterday in between only. So, that booting topic is there. We will complete that booting and rebooting also today. Fine, yes, for WhatsApp group also there uh, there is a fees. Fine. You can get in touch with the given WhatsApp number which I have reflected at and also I'll show you. You can talk with them. Fine. So yes. So let's start now state wise. Uh, so we start with the first day that is Chhattisgarh. Now education at the doorstep which is an initiative taken. Uh, now this initiative, the scheme, the program is called as Padai Tore Dor that is education at your doorstep initiative. So you should know both the names, what it means and what is the program name called. Now this uh, initiative actually is you know portal to tackle the impact of covid now see obviously now the pandemic situation has released down but you can get i'm not telling about uh, anything i'm talking about the initiatives which are digitally made to tackle the crisis so now keep the word as crisis in mind very well okay so when we talk about um, uh, Chhattisgarh as one of the states so this particular initiative which was started now the objective of this initiative was to provide a platform to connect teachers and students by providing access to the good quality of educational content uh, from their homes I mean, I mean say comfortable from their homes so this is what the initiative was. it means to tackle now they may not use the word covid as the top term they may use the word crisis so you should be able to answer it very clearly arabic literature i have uh, i saw your message just give me this let me complete this slide i'll come to your message i'll read your message and we'll get back to you okay now in the state of kerala there is an initiative that is kite which is started now what does it refers to kerala infrastructure and technology for education it was basically set up to ensure continuous learning that is with the slogan physical distance and social equal utility in practice and it was basically to foster promote and implement modernization of educational institution so it the, the initiative was done in the state of kerala that is kite initiative with the end to ensure continuous learning without any you know without any distractions so physical distance was is not a distraction in fact it has to be taken as an utility in order to foster or promote the educational educational aspects that is with the help of institutions now Madhya Pradesh that is DG LIP that is nothing but learning enhancement program which was uh, basically started in order to ensure that you know there is a proper assess of educational resources in spite of any any I mean to say during the lockdown but ensuring that in future also if there are certain type of dist in, uh, obstacles uh, with the help of you know DG in it, that is learning enhancement program things or resources can reach the students and there should be no uh, pause in the learning facility and last is the state of Maharashtra that is learning pack learning from home package so this was basically a technical support which was provided uh, in order to have continuity plans in learning so that the children will definitely the students from the grades of 1 to 12 should not be affected uh, you know especially in the crisis time so just this keep this in mind it can be a part of your questions uh, maybe in the coming uh, you know uh, examination so just just keep in mind what which state and what was the initiative which was brought up fine Bumesh very good evening that day you dropped a message but then you deleted the message and you left I didn't realize I mean to say I was busy with one topic so couldn't check on your message okay Arabic literature uh, I'm sitting for the first time for UGC net Arabic I have to take guidance for first paper how can I gradually uh, grow okay how can you gradually uh, take knowledge for your paper one so See at the last no five minute session I take as a motivational session. So in that session I will come with your topic. I mean to say as a fresher what exactly you need to do and this is the right time in fact for you to start. Now everyone now this is not only for the Arabic literature. Um, 
L please remember one thing uh, when we talk about uh, uh, Deepa you are talking about the initiative no as such there was no initiative with the state only what states I have got I brought that but still I will check once okay if there is a specific initiative with the state of Karnataka there was when I was reading the article it was only highlighting the states okay I'll just once again I'll check and get back to you tomorrow fine uh, yes, uh, before we start everyone, this is a digital initiative we are going to talk about. But uh, one thing very well, um, that uh, this is the month of March. It has already started. Today is 1st of March. By the way, happy Mahashivratri to everyone. And um, you have, I mean to say, every one of you have to now mentally prepare. Uh, in case if the exam falls, there is notification will be soon out. If it falls in the month of June or July, that is the all, ideally two months we are analyzing. Still, uh, April, March, April, May, there are only three months in your hand, ideally to prepare. So now your speed has to be a little bit increase. You, you have to little bit, you know, put yourself properly, plan things properly. How to do, what to do, that at the last, I will come, come to the five-minute session where we have motivational session. That time I'll come to that preparation for everyone, okay? So yes, now digital initiatives, we have studied some digital initiatives yesterday also. Uh, let us come to this again, the uh, initiatives, additional initiatives. Uh, now under that, we have National Academic Depository that is called as NAT, which was started in, on 17th of July 2017. Now, what was the purpose of this? Anyone, I mean to say, old students may be knowing it very well. Anyone new should know that this is an initiative to provide online store for all the academic awards. It means that it is a national depository, academic depository, a 24 by 7 online store for all academic awards that you can keep your certificates, I mean to say with reference to your diploma, degree, mark sheet can be stored over here in a safer form. So you can uh, get an account with this, you can open an account for yourself and uh, keep all your documents in this depository which is available 24 by 7. Okay. The next is National Digital Library of India that is which started in the year 2018, 19th June. Now, this is a project which was under Ministry of Education, that is Government of India, initiated by Ministry of Education, Government of India. This is very important. The objective is to collect and collate the metadata. That is, anyone who is not aware of this metadata, it's a set of data that describes and give information about other data. You can say subset also. And it provides full text index from several national and international digital libraries as well as from all the relevant source. That's the reason we call it as metadata. Okay. So the objective is to get all the relevant sources with respect to what with I mean to say whether it is internationally or whether it's internationally. Fine. Now, uh, apart from this, now National Mission on uh, Education through ICT. We have seen yesterday a lot of initiatives which were initiated by National Mission ICT. So let's have a detailed understanding about this also. So first of all, what is this? National Mission on Education through ICT. Acronym is written in the bracket. You uh, Sometimes the full forms are also been asked. So you should be prepared for both. Because I have tested students in my regular MCQ classes. They get little bit, you know, if same uh, same things are given, bit of confusion is there. So keep in mind very well the full forms. That is National Mission on Education through ICT. That is Information and Communication Technology. So basically, it is one of the landmark initiative of Ministry of Human Resource Development. I have highlighted this to address all the education and learning related needs not only of students but also of teachers and lifelong learners okay if you remember one of the initiative by them yesterday which we did was diksha also falls under this category whereas i told yesterday very clearly that it is not only beneficial for the students but it is beneficial for the teachers also as well as parents also as well as life learners also okay um this this is asked in one of the previous year question paper yes uh, i mean to say question paper also it is asked but it is uh, it is not typical question it has a different uh, flavors of this this question comes in different flavors so i have just merged up every information in one slide so that you can remember this very well okay so the mission is to bridge the gap by providing just in 
time quality education resources and and uh, teaches 20 sorry uh, and teaches 20 by it is teaches it is teaches 24 by 7 to learners irrespective of their social economic and educational status now see this sentence again i certain sentences i highlight you very well when they come in statement format just to confuse you now here it is given now this is from the portal itself i've got this sentence they are purposely given it say irrespective of social economic and educational status it means that there is no bifurcation or segregation done irrespective of any social background any e economic background or any educational status you are from it is going to provide you the same type of quality education and 24 by 7 so in case if you are writing an assertion or you know if you get a statement question or if you get an assertion and reasoning question so you they may confuse you so remember you this is just to confuse you irrespective whatever status or whatever class any any person is it is going to help it 24 by 7 okay now the national mission on education through ict was launched on third feb uh, that is third 20 2009 in the state of Andhra Pradesh as centrally sponsored scheme to leverage the potential of ICT that is to leverage the potential of uh, information and communication technology in C teaching and learning process so this can be a question of you know your teaching aptitude also Pur purposely they can give you a scheme which was centrally launched for the potential of uh, information and communication technology so that was nothing but national mission on education through ICT now these are the this paragraph talks about its objectives and functions so we have to little bit read properly empowering and enabling students by inquire by ensuring sorry equity and access now if you see equity and access to education is even one of the objective of higher education so the same thing is followed over here the equity that is equality and accessibility to all that is a by default objective of higher education which is followed with the help of national mission on education through ICT. So that is one of their objective. Connecting over 400 universities and 20, 22,000 colleges all over India with a high speed data network. Improving faculty quality by using a unique synchronous training, training methodology so that you know the quality of teaching gets enhanced. Ensuring equity by providing access to expensive equipment to the students even in the remote corner. So you can keep in mind that it ensures that we have learned economics. So it is you know students whether they are settled in metro cities or they are in the remote part of country. Uh, they have the innovative ways, ways with the help of ICT to reach to the students. Making available e-content and educa educational videos created by the best teachers which can be you know which can be available for the students as well as other stakeholders also to get uh, to enhance their knowledge. So this, this is a comprehensive slide on national mission on educational through ICT one of the digital initiative also which you have to keep in mind very well okay any form of questions will come see as I said that you know right now theoretical aspects are going more it is only theoretical aspects but at the end of the day or at the end after the class on uh, app you can check five five questions we give you can just go and attempt that questions which are related to the topic which i teach today but when we start our mcq sessions that time you know it is a pool of on an average 300 to 400 questions from one topic that is one unit like for example ICT so ICT will have 300 to 400 questions which will be taken uh, as in practice so that is not only previous year question all the questions including previous year the practice questions will be will be inculcate I mean to say will be uh, given for you so that you learn a lot with the help of MCQs but somewhere your theory also should be a little bit factual information should be also properly remembered fine so yes now let's go to our topic that is memory now yesterday we did catch memory register memory there was some amount of confusion some clarity was needed so i thought that i should take this lecture today exclusively on memory so if you see the chart which i have reflected on the screen normally we we this is the chart which we you know we see that is memory which is divided into primary memory now if you remember yesterday I have told you primary memory is also called as what different name what is the secondary memory primary memory is also called as main memory secondary memory is 
also called as auxiliary memory so this is the typical chart which we see okay and many a times you know then where catch comes when reg where register comes it becomes a confusion so i have just you know just splitted it in the different form i hope uh, is it properly everything is going uh, smoothly i guess okay uh, yes so now when we talk about memory no doubt memory is divided into primary memory and secondary memory so primary memory is called as your the main memory it is also called as the semiconductor or it is also called as the internal memory there is another name also internal memory when we talk about secondary memory it is called as secondary memory auxiliary memory uh, in the form of magnetic memory or optical memory or it is also called as external memory fine now we have something called as processors okay that is cpu memory now no doubt it is a part of primary memory only but we have we get this catch and register now students get confused what is this catch and what is this register so let me give you a proper clarity okay yesterday if there were a student had asked you know primary memory so catch memory come yes no doubt but how does it functions and you know when many questions are asked on this so if you see uh, just a minute okay so i'm just taking you to one diagram i'll just play with the slides just for a minute so that you can understand the things very well okay so if you see this is my cpu okay i have uh, the diagram in in front of you so when i talk about this cpu it is basically uh i mean to say which which is a central processing unit now we have the hard disk drive we have ram okay that is a random access memory we have the cache memory so basically what happens is that when we, when there certain information is needed okay cpu you know cpu has its speed in gigahertz okay whereas hard disk has the memory in uh, uh, speed is very less now in by the time you know cpu wants the function to be operated it is definitely not possible for the hard disk to give the you know instruct i mean to say to provide the information so that is done by ram but again ram speed is not matching with the cpu speed which is in gigahertz and that work is done by the catch memory it is the one okay see catch memory is see catch memory so i have got a difference between catch memory also and main me that is ram so catch memory is used to store frequently assessed means the information which is frequently assessed uh, with the help of you know cpu so that memory is used to store frequently assessed data in order to pick up quickly uh, that is in order to quickly assess the data whenever it is required so the data which is you know required frequently always gets you know stored in the cache memory and the cache memory speed matches with the cpu speed and that's the reason even the cache memory we have you know it is very expensive yesterday we have discussed on that so if you are little bit confused i'll again help you to understand see this is how we have the system okay set up we have cpu and we have hard disk drive so now any information which is circle i mean to say which is data sorry the data which is required frequently by the cpu by the time it goes to you know to the hard or hard disk by the time it's provide to cpu the speed is not matching okay so in such case either it is dependent on ram but again in ram the loophole is what the speed so that speed is given in with the help of cache memory and the information or the data which is required frequently is always stored in the cache memory and that's the reason the cache memory is expensive because it matches the speed of the cpu to retrieve the information or the data fine so if you see over here catch memory is comparatively closer so that's the reason i have brought this diagram so you can see it's very closer and it can provide the diagram uh, sorry it can provide the information very uh, with the speed which cpu runs with it is comparatively fast as i said and it is comparative the capacity is less because it only stores the data which is you know frequently used that's all now ram what is the work of ram so ram is also called as the random access memory it is the memory unit that indirectly interacts with the central processing unit it is comparative far okay so it is you know it is comparatively far and that's the reason it even can't match up the speed uh, uh, the speed is also slow which is not matching up cpu and hence the catch memory gets the work done and capacity is larger so i now i hope that catch memory is very clear now 
register if you remember yesterday we have done register also so registers are situated here itself in the cpu so that is also the smallest smallest and fastest you can say the information which can be retrieved so that even works more faster than the uh, cache memory so that is how you know register cache memory works out and that is you know that's where that's the reason i have wrote written it under processor i hope it is very clear now cache and register now one more thing that is just a minute i have i hope it yes so catch actually has you know three levels now this please keep in mind this can be a part because catch memory we have lot of questions so catch has three levels now the levels are level 1 level 2 and level 3 now actually these levels are on the base of the speed so the level 1 is the fastest level level 2 is fast and level 3 is the less fast so they they only differs with the speed but there are three you know there are three levels of catch that is level 1 the most fastest level 2 the fast one and level 3 the little fast one is it clear so this much enough information is enough for you to remember for catch memory i hope it is clear now with everyone fine now let's go with your understanding the difference between primary memory and secondary now see you can see when you talk about primary memory in examples you see cache memory comes and register comes under primary no doubt they are under primary only only what i said what make them different is that the speed which i showed you which i have explained you properly very well now is it clear so now you don't have to confuse that uh, you know primary memory catch memory we studied registered we studied so it is only about the processing time which is very fastest with this two memories that's all that all you have to keep in mind so when we distinguish primary memory from secondary so primary memory is the one which is temporary secondary memory is the one which is permanent primary memory is directly accessible by the processor or cpu we have seen both the examples now with the help of diagram secondary memory is not directly accessible by cpu it's not directly accessible we have seen this also nature of the parts of primary me memory varies that is ram which is volatile in nature okay and rom which is non volatile now that also uh we have done day before yesterday uh, that is ram and rom so if you know ram volatile it means the data is can be retrieved and altered when we talk about volatile it means it can be altered or retrieved on date when we talk about rom or it is when we talk about non volatile it can be only read okay read only memory that we call okay is it clear with so ram is basically a high speed memory uh, ram we can say is slower than you know it's it's compared to ram it is slow so this you have to because there are some questions on volatile and non volatile also Okay, so you should remember. Basically, the questions are they confuse you always with RAM and ROM only, which is volatile, which is non-volatile. So you should be able to uh, keep this in mind. Secondary memory is a non-volatile uh, memory. Now, primary memory, the memory devices used for primary are semiconductor memories, whereas uh, secondary memory they use devices such as magnetic, magnetic and optical memory. So we are going to see the storage capacity topic also today. primary memory as i said i have given you the different names and purposely i have highlighted this point so you should know this very well they are called as main memory internal memory whereas secondary memory is called as external memory or it is called as auxiliary memory okay examples are given very well so if you see uh like for example now yes just a minute yeah now if you see this there was yesterday a small question also i took took on this so these two stands with what these two stands with your auxiliary memory or a secondary memory then we have your primary memory then we have your cache memory then we have registers and then we have you know the cpu requires the data so now how it comes you know very well so now there are two arrows one is an upward arrow one is a downward arrow so upward arrow shows that you know the smallest and fastest access time with expensive so yes yesterday there was a question that registers are more expensive then we have cache memory at number 2 then we have you know uh, main memory then we have the secondary memory 
when we talk about the capacity that is the secondary memory has the more capacity as compared to the rest of the others so many a times this uh, sequence okay uh, is seen they will definitely dismantle you and give and you have to put them in sequence but you have to read the question very well with respect to what you with respect to your uh, what they are asking they are asking with respect to accuracy they are ask uh, sorry they are asking with respect to speed they are asking with respect to cost or they are asking with respect to capacity that you have to read very well is it clear educational uh, with sangamitra this pdf comes on, on only on a whatsapp group of the channel okay uh this comes only on the whatsapp group notes comes only on the whatsapp group of the channel so you ideally need to get in touch with the channel for the whatsapp group okay fine so yes i hope now i have i have tried my level best to clear all the doubts with respect to catch memory with respect to you know primary secondary register there was lot of amount of confusion with all this is it clear okay now coming next to is yes uh, i had a detail about sorry i was just searching this only volatile and non volatile memory in detail so when we talk about volatile memory so computer memory that requires constant in easiest term that requires constant power to maintain the stored information is called as what it's called as the volatile memory it means that without power it means there is there it requires a consistent flow to retain the data so if there is no power the data will not be retained okay whereas non volatile memory the information can be stored even there is no constant power it means the data will be written that there is no need of the supply of power to retain the data yes it can affect the system performance it affects the system storage it holds the data volatile it means as we learned it holds the data temporary whereas non volatile it holds the data permanently uh yes neelam i'll come to it just give me some time i'll come to your doubt also okay fine let me first complete this then i'll come to your your uh yes i'll i'll come to it because there is a small explanation about it again i will tell you in detail don't worry fine volatile memory is much faster compared to non volatile memory so examples here we have seen ram here we have an example of rom it refers to primary storage type it refers to secondary storage type is it clear so this this things you have to remember very well when you are talking because there are definitely question scenes on volatile memories and you know uh, basically uh, Uh, your temporary mem uh, sorry your temporary memory or your primary memory or they can give you a question on secondary they can give you the question on the basis of you know on the basis of their sequence so everything you know you have to uh, remember very well in 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 detail so that you can able to crack the question in any form it comes fine now yes before i go ahead now yes we are going to talk about static ram and uh, dynamic ram now before that neelam as you asked me the question with uh, registers okay so you are little bit confused with this now see register memory actually holds a temporary data temporary data which you know which is required frequently or which your you instructions which are required frequently and that has to be used by cpu but if you compare register and cache no doubt cache is fastest but more than that is the register which will give you the data in a required time so all the required data is passed through register before before it is processed so it means that suppose if this is your cpu okay and your is you know your registered memory so it uh, meanwhile the data goes into the processing it has to pass through registers and that's the reason you can see the functions as same it holds the frequency uh, sorry it holds the frequent data instructions and memories which are to be addressed by cpu and it is one which is very nearest to the cpu even before the catch now is it clear with you fine just let me know or if it's some doubt again just put it in the message okay fine uh educational sangamitra whatsapp group uh, you have or uh, the number is there uh, the number will reflect at the end i will tell you the number at the end so if you don't mind because i have to uh, uh, put down the slide show and go and search and give you so just if you can wait for some time the number is there at the start all starting also the number is there at the ending also starting second third slide you can see second slide or, or yeah in second slide you can see the number 
the number for the whatsapp fine so yes now let's go with the next topic that is static ram and dynamic ram now see uh, we as i said one of the diagram i showed you actually ram our regular ram works as what the dynamic ram and the catch memory works as what the static ram okay so let's understand still the difference so static ram uses transistor to store a single bit of data now that single bit of data which is required frequently which is you know which is uh, required uh, in a very smallest time and dynamic uh, ram uses a separate capacitor to store a bit of data so static ram does not need periodic refreshment see now this is now here see i mean to say a uh, university previous year question paper i mean in previous year question a question was asked which of the ram requires refreshment now see normally we know we read it as a sentence but now see the sentence here it is clearly given that dynamic needs dynamic ram needs refreshment and the question was very simple question which of the ram requires refreshment and they have given static dynamic and they have given more two options so you have to remember see if the what is the importance of reading you know and what is the importance of theory lectures and theory reading this is the importance okay so you know very well that you know dynamic like for example let us take an example uh, i'm not saying all previous year question paper comes but if you read theory at once let the question come either from previous year or from fresh you should be able to remember that very well so scanning uh, reading very well is important so see it's a very simple thing but how you have two marks for this so refreshment is required in dynamic refreshment is not required in static a uh, uh, static ram structure is complex okay whereas dynamic is simplex so this also can be a statement wise question statics are more expensive now you don't have to remember statics are more expensive you know that statics are you very well know that not statics are related to what they are related to catch memory obviously catch memory is expensive so static ram is going to be expensive okay uh when we talk about dynamic ram it is less expensive because if you compare ram and catch so ram is not expensive at catch so obviously uh, dynamic ram is also is going to be less expensive uh uh catch memory is faster so obviously static will be faster uh dynamic is slower compared to static okay now i'm not using the word compare again and again because yesterday i told you the technique you students get bit confused so i'm not using it and now see at the end they have given statics are used in catch memory and dynamic are used in main memory that is your ram is it clear regular ram i hope now memory topic bit of confidence you must have got i mean to say when you are reading the topics little bit of confidence little bit of amount of clearance will be there definitely so it can help you out to clear your questions very well now when we talk about rom so again rom has a division in the form of you know p rom e rom uh, and your rom so let's let's see what is the difference so when we talk about p rom that is it is called as programmable read only memory programmable read only memory when we talk about ep rom that is it's called as erasable programmable read only memory okay it means you can erase it and you can reuse it now the last one is called as it is also called as ea there are two words in some books you can see ea and in some books you can see ep uh, sorry efp rom it means that it is a electrically erasable programmable read only memory or electrically electrically alterable read only memory so just please keep this both the minds in mind in some books they have used this word and in some books they have used this word so you should not get confused either it is elect it is electrically alterable or it is electrically erasable programmable read only memory okay uh now what is the function of uh, programmable memory that is when we which we called as read only memory it is that it modifies it's it can be modified only by one user it means that like for example actually this type of memory okay is used for recording information using a facility so like take an example the recorded information cannot be changed like take an example of video games okay or take an example of mo uh, mobiles so it is modified only once by the user okay so you can't do it any any time after that that is so i gave you an example of video games or i gave you an example of mobile phones 
Now, when I talk about uh, erasable and reused memory, okay, the read-only memory, it is it is developed to allow the programmers to reprogram. See, erase it, and obviously, if you are erasing it, you can reuse it. It means uh, make the program or again either to erase the program and to reprogram uh, the chips by that is by read-only chips. Now, here you can take an example of you know. Uh, PCs, so you can you know have you can update them, so you can erase it and you can update them. So that example you can take over here uh, using ultraviolet light. So this can the reprogramming can be done by with the help of what using ultraviolet light. Now the next one is your electrically alterable program. So here with the help of electrical signals, memory can be programmed by uh, and it can be erased by electrical signals that you can call it as you know normal electrical voltage you do not require ultraviolet so it is written very clearly it can be reprogrammed using electrical charge so now you can you know you may get a question like for example now it is very easy to understand but it can be twisted Elec uh, ultraviolet light or electrical charge is used in which of the memory so you should be very clear with this examples you should use it and you should be very clear with that is it clear fine i hope it is very clear with everyone and this uh, we have studied ram also in detail rom also in detail we have studied memory also in detail now uh, storage capacity uh, here again when we talk about secondary memory the storage capacity now there are questions on storage capacity sequence also floppy drive you have this in the previous year question cd rom now cd is full form because in one of the paper it was given so i have brought a full form also here i have highlighted in different colors so that you remember it very well compact disc dvd that is digitally versatile disc blu ray hard drive and magnetic tape so the capacity increase in the storage capacity so they will give you again here also they can give you the uh, options and they can tell you to arrange from lowest to highest or highest to lowest both the ways the questions are available in the uh, in the previous year question paper fine so that also you have to keep in mind mr sandeep thank you very much for uh, such an respectable comment i really appreciate that thank you very much so fine i hope see i'm just taking a pause because i do not want you to for a second also to go in a uh, you know in a in a in a tension that what exactly is there to learn just as i said no one i have a good motivational dose for you people today so don't worry we will see that also okay but i hope is there any doubt related to ram rom or primary memory or cache or register please let me know we can sort it out today i mean to say i'm not telling that i will not take it ahead i will but as the fresh topic is fresh i have ppts immediately so we can take it today also uh, now, Miss Khan, if you are there, Tamina, if I hope I pronounce your name very correctly. Now, yesterday, you were the one to talk about booting and rebooting, uh, booting actually, but I have brought booting, rebooting both. So, everyone just, you know, whenever you have a doubt, just please put, put, keep putting the session so that others also get benefit out of it. So, let us understand this booting and rebooting also. So, ba basically in computer or in computing, booting is the process of starting a computer as initiated via hardware such as a button by or a software command after it is switched on switched on computer central processing unit that is cpu has no software in its main memory so some process must load software into the memory before it is executed it means that booting is starting a computer's operating system and rebooting is to start it for a second or third time now you must have heard this term or you must have done sometimes rebooting also so when we talk about rebooting rebooting actually happens when you know when the computer crashes when your system stops uh, this is crashing it means your system stops working maybe there is some malfunctioning so rebooting allows the computer to restart and get back normally is it clear okay so booting is a normal process of starting your computer but while starting you know when we start the engine okay if there is some way when we say there is some dust so that has to you know settle down so rebooting will help in case if there is something such type of problem rebooting will help it to sort it out and restart your computer that's how it is you know in there 
okay that's how booting and rebooting start miss khan i hope you are there yes now two three questions are there uh yes education with sangamitra there are many students like you but yes went out whatever is there in your heart went out so when you went out when you throw it out your heart becomes normal and it, it even also it gets reboot so now see you gave an ex example of booting and rebooting okay now your mind needs to boot and for that it is very important to reboot so now you have rebooted and you can start with easily don't see don't give up at the end of the day those students who get you know little bit nervous with uh, we left you you couldn't crack with two marks three marks see you have not lost anything idly in your life knowledge is going to help you out at any point of life that you remember if you regret no it means you you are losing something but i don't think in life you have lost everything you have got good knowledge one thing i request students not to leave i just have a best piece for you people just two minutes just wait i will just take you know uh, certain doubts okay now fine next is um, uh neelam how to remember this capacity uh, this capacity you have to remember with the help of uh, your i mean to say you have to remember with little bit of practice which you have to go on daily basis every at least alternate days fine yamuna this pdf will come the moment the class the topic gets over topic gets over the pdf will come don't worry okay not know where it is going to go then uh, pushpa yes i hope i have answered everyone's question yes now a piece of art for you bit of motivation you can take or you can take the way you want but a very beautiful thing which i came across be patient with yourself be patient with your patience actually with yourself life changes do not life changes do not come all at once they have to be earned with a thousand small choices over time okay so in your case it is thousand steps over time do not expect to build a city overnight be kind sometime be kind kindness to yourself when you fail okay kindness it means to your heart your mind your body everything you will make the change definitely just be patience actually you know i just it was one of the piece i was reading but it should be patience it should not patient it should be patience so just be patience with yourself okay so yes i thought it is one of the beautiful piece which i should definitely you know uh, bring for you people and this ans this will definitely answer all your uh, doubts neelam there is no shortcuts uh, shortcut keys uh, you always give to remember i have i will come up with something shortcut but i think uh, let me see i have given you i i i myself forgot it in case if i remember i i to recall it back fine so yes with all those who have you know that regret that two marks three marks four marks now as i said you have to boot yourself so for for that you have to do that rebooting so that you know that should not happen after every week whenever you are sitting and especially when you sit you know to study when you re open the book and you remember oh my god i lost with two marks now next time what will happen what will happen it means you are setting a question mark your with yourself better do a positive manifestation that yes something is you know you are going to crack it that but that is see when we think something no that thinking gets surrounded by our uh, i mean to say it gets surrounded around us so just surround yourself with a positive uh, chakra rather than making a negative chakra okay yes apart from this paper 2 with us is with management commerce and economics now yes paper 2 students deepa are you there paper 2 we have started with uh, mcqs also by one of the sir so you can check on the channel for mcqs uh, you it will help you out for management so you were telling you yesterday were very tense so theory and mcqs are parallelly starting so you can have a look at the channel so where we have video lectures we have pdf notes which have practiced previous year question papers that is 5 years papers mock test after the syllabus is completed the fees is 5000 uh, educational uh, education with sangamitra this is the number i am talking about if you want any detail you can please contact this number and you will get all the details if you have any queries okay deepa i hope you heard what i said uh, ranjit thank you very much thank you everyone bhumesh what happened about your result because last time you said but you left and i couldn't get back to you 
fine apart from that the channel also has gujarat set west bengal set k set ap set so we have a kit in the form of syllabus mock test we have pdf solution with answers we have notes we have mcqs uh the price is 999 contact details are also given you can get in touch with them for any queries okay i hope uh, everyone has taken down the number if you want and yes thank you everyone see you tomorrow uh, with all the remaining things which we have left with ict uh, let's let's concentrate little bit more so that you can get extensive knowledge uh madam library information science paper 2 uh we have not yet started but you are you want notes exclusively are you are asking for notes i will just get in touch with that okay yes so thank you everyone yes arabic literature are you there or you have went you were asking me about how to start so this is the sorry i just skipped it skipped from my mind so if you are a fresher if you are going for if you are going to appear for the first time you have to ensure that you start with all the lit, uh, theory classes first of every subject every unit i mean to say you have to learn the theory first and then after theory you can please start with your mcqs preparation this is an ideal pattern which you have to keep but theory learning should be very very alertly and uh, you have to ensure that you know you make handy notes i keep on till telling in my class every time but i don't know how many of them listen and how many of the years you know do not have an impact but if you start prepare make if you start preparing your handy notes no it's going to help be helpful a lot uh, yes neelam i know you are from library science so you mean to say that pe you people are looking for notes i'll just enquire and get back to you okay so arabic literature i hope uh, you have heard i didn't see any response if you are there so please respond if not then you can come back to me tomorrow in the class okay so yes thank you everyone see you tomorrow without fail sharp at 9 pm good night everyone